Let's start with, uh, with our first questions here. Who has a question? Yes, ma'am. Uh, when it comes to vitamin E as a supplement, the question was, was asking about um, a supplement that's come out in some, uh, some studies about taking what vitamin E is, is actually turned into, which is tocopherol. It's alpha tocopherol. Um, it, and maybe the supplement is actually named something else, but the active ingredient is alpha tocopherol. I don't suggest. I don't recommend, I've never seen immense benefit from people actually taking a lot of or any vitamin E supplements. Um, if anything, a, a low dose, but most of the vitamin E that is needed, if you're eating the adequate levels of nutrition and the right, if you're getting the, the fats in your diet that you need, you're gonna be getting adequate vitamin E in your diet as well. So most people should not need an additional vitamin E supplement if they're eating adequate fat um, and getting, getting the right macronutrients into their body. Yes, sir. Uh, the question was, um, does that apply to the other vitamins as well? So, um, A, D, and K. And the answer for that is yes in, in most cases. Vitamin D is a very interesting, uh, scientific nut to crack right now because we have some very, very significant deficiency of vitamin D in the human population. Um, and a lot of people don't necessarily know why. Number one, well, we know because there's been this huge thing about sunscreen. Um, statin drugs are eliminating your body, producing the adequate amount of cholesterol, which is causing problems with, with vitamin D synthesis in the skin. And simply, we're, we're inside a lot more than we used to be. I remember growing up on the farm, I mean, I was outside all day. I mean, literally, it was 16 hours in the bright sun. Um, it was just, you know, we just don't get nearly as much sun anymore. Vitamin D is one of those things that I'd say most people need to consider a supplement because if you were to get it tested, there's a really, really good chance you're low or you're chronically low, which chronically low would be under 20. I think it's nanograms per deciliter or milligrams per deciliter. Um, under 20 uh, or even between 20 and 30, the levels that they've suggested has been uh, 30 is healthy. And there's a, there's a whole host of physicians and scientists saying that number needs to be bumped to 50 at least. And, and when in the clinical practice, we were trying to see people above 50. That's when we saw their energy really coming back. We saw a lot of problems beginning to be resolved because the cellular function improved. So uh, vitamin K shouldn't be necessary. Should really should be able to get that in changing your diet. Um, and vitamin A also, if you're eating the right things, you should be able to be getting the vitamin A as well. Very good questions. Yes, sir. Um, the question was about if, if I could explain a little bit more behind vitamin K and blood thinners and kind of what's, what's going on there. Um, the reason that you're not supposed to eat dark leafy greens when you're on blood thinners is because dark leafy greens have vitamin K, which actually are a, uh, they're a clotting. They help the body regulate clotting. Um, when you're on a blood thinner, they're obviously trying to thin out your blood, which, they're, which the reason they're doing that precisely is to stop clotting. So they're actually getting in the way of the body's own clotting control, and the body's actually the drug is what's controlling the clotting at that point. So the reason they're telling you not to eat those foods or they don't want vitamin K in your diet is because they don't want to be working against what the drug is trying to do, which is to thin out your blood and to not clot. So you'll notice if, if you're taking blood thinners, if you were to ever get a cut or, or hit, you'll bump your arm on something, you'll notice the internal bleeding is a lot more significant, your bruise is bigger. And you also know that you will lose a lot more blood if you get cut bad, if you're on blood thinners too, because you are, you are interfering with the clotting mechanism that the body has. That's, that's what's going on. Is there a dietary way to accomplish what they're trying to do with the drug that's thinning the blood? Um, is there a dietary way, the question was, is there a dietary way to accomplish the thinning of the blood that they're trying to do with the drugs. Um, I'll go out a little bit on a limb here. What I've read, it, it's not helping. It's not really helping anything. It's not decreasing, it's not really increasing lifespan. It's not decreasing mortality rates. Um, 
a lot of the times people are, the drug is actually there to kind of save you from yourself because your, your system is so screwed up. And when it comes to nutrition, essential fatty acids in a lot of time, in most times, will actually thin the blood out to, to the level it needs to be. So nutritionally, essential fatty acids will do that. Eating vitamin K, eating deep, deep green foods is actually going to add more K to your system, which could cause more clotting. Okay, so essential fatty acids is what you want to do if you want the blood to be a little bit thinner. Yes, ma'am. Oxidization is damage done by free radicals. Free radicals are exposing parts of that cell to oxygen that don't, that should not have it. Okay? And what essential fatty acids are doing is they're allowing the oxygen, they're, they're building hemoglobin, and, and this is what protein does as well. It builds hemoglobin, which is the oxygen transfer. Um, which creates the appropriate type of oxygen for the cell in the right way. Oxidative stress is, is what happens when wild and crazy ions in cells are damaging, bouncing all around, and, and creating, it's basically, for example, creating a scratch or a dent in the cell. It's scratching that surface. When oxygen hits that damage, that's oxidative stress. That creates rust or it creates a scab for example, and that's what oxid oxidization is versus oxygenation. Cell damage, inflammation, inflammation. Yeah, there you go. That that's perfect. Yes, it'll. It, lots of oxidization in a cellular group will cause inflammatory reaction, which is arthritis, which is all kinds of things. Or systemic inflammation means that you've got all kinds of damage all throughout your body. And, and what it does is it rushes blood and it rushes other things to the area to try to repair. But when you've got all that going on um, for extended periods of time, the damage is just overwhelming. And this is why cholesterol raises a lot of the time is because inflammatory reactions cause damage and cholesterol is actually going to the area to fix the problem. Yes. That's right. Yep. That's a good question. Yes, sir. Yeah, if he's, if, he's got a, if he's having a chronic allergic reaction to something, it's most likely coming from a food he's eating. He is exposing his, himself constantly to some type of um, agonist, for example. It's, 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 it's annoying the system. And hives is basically, it's the body reacting to something that he's taking in or something in his environment that is causing that. Um, I, I obviously don't know necessarily exactly what it is, but again, it's one of those allergic type of reactions. Way up there. Yes, you ma'am. So the first, the first part of the question was, was to kind of asking if we're a low carb, if we're low carb fans around here. Um, and then the second part of it was, well, if you do that, isn't that going to put you into a ketogenic state or a state of ketosis? Um, one of the things that you'll actually find as we go through the course is I'm a big advocate of whole food because a whole food carbohydrate in most cases when it's taken in adequate and balanced amounts is not going to hurt you because it's delivering a lot of nutrition. It has a lot of purpose still. A processed carbohydrate does not have purpose to your body. And in a lot of cases, the processing that they actually have to do to it to get it in that cracker or chip type form that's what's bad. It's, it's all the stuff they have to put in it to do that. So I like low carb diets a lot. And when I say diets, I mean lifestyles, okay? I don't, I'm not talking about something you do for a while and then you stop. I like low carb lifestyles. I function really well on a lower carbohydrate lifestyle. My wife, on the other hand, functions better on a whole food carbohydrate type intake. She does not need the protein and fat levels that I do to feel well, she actually feels better when she's eating lots of fruits and vegetables and kind of keeping the animal proteins to once or twice a day and making sure that her adequate fats, her fats are up, just so you know. Her fats are up, natural fats, um, coming through avocado or coming through seed oils or things like that, okay? So yes, we do like low carb lifestyles, uh, but we also can you, can, you can have a higher carbohydrate ratio and still do well. It just depends on what type you are, and you'll feel it. 
um, as you go and you start changing things. But it's got to be the whole food carbs. Those carbs have to, ha they have to serve a purpose nutritionally. Right, if you're making your own bread, it, then you know what the grain looked like when it started. The only process it went through was you grinding it down and you're making the bread. You're not bleaching it, you're not enriching it with, with elemental minerals that your body can't use anyways. Right, if you're making your own bread, put some almond butter on it and have a blast. Absolutely. Yes, sir, they don't work together at all. The new valve system does not work at all with what I teach. What, what we teach, what, what we go through as it relates to nutrition, being in food or not. Um, I've seen a lot of foods with a low Nuval score that are absolutely 100% vital for health. And I've, I've seen a lot of processed carbohydrates with really, really high scores. So I don't agree with the methodology that they use to get those numbers. Um, and actually a lot of scientists and a lot of doctors don't either. But there's always two sides to every story. You've always, everything I said tonight, by the way, there's someone out there who disagrees. It's gonna be up to you to figure out what, what you take home and what you start using. I'll put a little caveat on that. The medical physiology stuff, it's hard to disagree with that. We pretty much know what's going on with the body. We pretty much know how the body's using proteins and carbs and fats. So that's kind of common sense, but these are strategies that are being used kind of in the marketplace. I, I don't think Nouvelle does the best job in educating people on, on where nutrition is found in food, what nutrition is doing, and why a food would have a higher or low, lower score. And I think one of the things that kind of cripples consumers in a lot of cases is um, they don't know how that score got there. They don't really know how that, how, why is this score higher and, and this chicken breast over here is low? Why is that? Why is this beef so low? When I just talked about how beef is, is good stuff. It does not cause cancer. It does not cause heart disease. You have to, you have to know where the beef's coming from. Again, we'll get, that, we'll get to that in the next lesson. But I do think it's a little bit misleading and, and um, not even really even necessary in the conversation of how to eat healthy. I think you'll find this will probably be a lot easier. So, yes, ma'am. The question was, um, if I could explain a little bit more uh, why I made a, different, uh, a differentiation between chemical sodium and whole food sodium. And um, whole food sodium is sodium that is mineralized. It comes from the earth, uh, such as Redmond's Real Salt is a brand that I use at home. Um, there's other salts. There's, there's Himalayan salt. There's uh, gray, gray Celtic salt are some of the really good brands. Um, Sodium nitrates and nitrites that are being used in food processing are the chemical form of what would be found in nature. And they are not surrounded by the other things that they need to be useful. That's really, it's that simple. So um, you want to find the whole food kind because it's surrounded with the things that your body needs, the other electrolytes, the other minerals that will get the job done.